I'm Josh with Wapaka Community Media, and we are back with our weekly update. We've got Ron Sari from the School District of Wapaka, and we don't have Aaron this week, but that's all right. Um, we're going to jump right into it, Ron. Um, one of the challenges the school district's having that's not unique to us, that's uh, a large problem, is a bus driver shortage. We've talked about that months, you know, months ago, and it's still an ongoing issue, and the kind of threat with that is a bit on transportation for extracurriculars. Yeah, that's exactly right. Last night we we spoke about this at the board meeting. We had a pretty lengthy conversation. Uh, it isn't just a Wapaka issue or a state of Wisconsin issue. Uh, it is a national issue and we're hurting for bus drivers. Everybody is. Um, and we know that our morning and afternoon routes take priority. But as you said, it's it's having an impact on our co-curriculars because our co-curriculars have to then work around the, the, the afternoon bus route to get kids home. So what this means is sometimes uh, we may have to leave earlier than typical so that the driver can deliver the kids to that event and then come back for their, their uh, afternoon route. The problem with that is it's so early then our athletes are sitting around at this other school for several hours and it just doesn't make sense. You know, the business of our business is teaching and learning. And so we don't want our teachers who are coaches out of the classroom when they don't need to be. And our students out missing instruction when they don't need to be. And they're waiting for two, three, four hours at another school because they had to get dropped off so early. It, you know, it's just uh, that that doesn't make sense to us. So uh, what we're doing is we're looking at what kind of workarounds do we have? Uh, one of the workarounds is uh, our insurance vendor, we contacted them and they said, yeah, you could have parents carpool. And there's a waiver form they provided to us that the parents could sign off. Uh, we, it's, it's not an option that we really prefer, uh, but it is an option that exists. And some of the feedback from our parents so far has been, well, you know, if it's a short distance, like maybe going to Manawa, that's not bad. We could possibly, you know, organize some carpools for that. But going all the way to a further school district, like maybe O'Connell Falls, that's a jaunt. And, uh, you know, they're, they kind of frown on that and we don't blame them. But it is an option that we explored and that we have at our availability if, if we need to. So another one is looking at changing the dates. Like for instance, on Thursday of this week, we happen to have five after school co-curricular events. Well, we don't have drivers for all of them. And uh, maybe what we could do is move some of them to a different date and time. So that's, a, that's an option that we're, we use. Uh, another is subcontracting with a different vendor. Um, we can do that. And uh, that is something that's possible, but just because the other, all the vendors across the state, all the, all the school districts and, and their vendors, if they have them, uh, have a bus driver shortage. So it doesn't mean that an, a, a different vendor isn't gonna have the same problem. It could be that, that they have a driver available on, on a certain uh, evening when, when Go Right Way uh, isn't able to fulfill the, uh, that for us. So it's an option we will look into and consider and see if that availability is there. The worst case scenario, Josh, we have to cancel. Nobody wants to have to cancel the event, but we, we may have to do that. We've already had to cancel some midday field trips. Um, so it, nobody wants to do that. We don't wanna have to have that impacting what we do as far as teaching and learning in our curriculum. But you, you know, I know Go Right Way is doing everything possible to try to attract and retain their drivers from the general wage increases they've done, their payroll structure, they're giving higher pay for, for doing trips and charters and they have incentives and recruiting and, and all of that. Last Friday at our football game, we worked with them and we had a bus out there with a sign, but we're trying to attract people to wanna to become drivers. And we played a little video on the, the screen, kind of a commercial trying to see if people would be interested in becoming bus drivers for, for them or for us. Uh, we asked them to stand the drivers that were in attendance to give them some recognition. And so, you know, it's a collaborative effort. The, the real solution is for community members to step up and be drivers. But one of the other additional things we're doing that 
go right way said that they're not aware of anybody else doing something like this is as a school district we are going to offer a thousand dollar uh bonus as an incentive for any staff or coaches to go get their cdl uh, for a bus driver it's a cdl i think it's an s uh category for the cdl to drive bus it's not like an over the road cdl it's a bus it's a separate certificate cdl but we're going to we're going to offer that $1000 um and it would be paid uh after they they drive their their first event uh, go right way is also committed to giving an additional $250 bonus after 30 days of 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 driving bus and then after 90 days they give a second $250 bonus so that equates to $1500 of bonus Josh just to uh go and get trained to, to uh, drive bus. And when you're getting trained by Go Right Way, they pay $14.50 an hour. And once you're trained and you are driving, the, the wage is $18.50 an hour. So I think about it this way. If I'm a football coach and I have a trip and the time it takes for me to leave Wapaka and get to the, the other school, play the event, and then drive back to Wapaka, Let's say it's five hours, 18.50 an hour, that's 92.50. Uh, for going to uh, an event, I would already be going to anyway, almost $100. So it can be a win-win. Um, it's important, I think, for our staff to know if they do go forward with this. And if, if Go Right Way has the drivers, those drivers would get the preference. That's part of their retention. Uh, a lot of their drivers want to do these, these evening events. And so they, they would have that preference. But yeah, that's the that's the scenario we're in. That's those are some of the incentives that we're doing. Uh, I believe we're the only district, uh, at least from Go Right Way's perspective, putting some skin in the game with uh, issuing a, a incentive, a financial incentive for staff or coaches to to get licensed. So, if someone's interested in driving bus, what are the qualifications, or what what do they need to do so? Well, they have to have a driver's license already. I would imagine they would have to be 18 years because you're you're going to be work, you know, driving students um, and willing to go through the training. And it it, it de is dependent on the motivation and uh, interest in, in the individual how quickly they want to get through the program with Go Right Way. I I would say probably the quickest, maybe three weeks. It could take several weeks, uh, but. Um, yeah, it, it, so there's not not huge hurdles in the way to do this for someone interested. I don't believe there is. No, um, when I think about it, and uh, this morning we we asked Go Right Way to kind of give us a little outline of how this how this looks. The permit fee to uh, get the license, the permit is thirty dollars, and then the actual license, depending on the expiration of the license, it could be anywhere from forty to ninety dollars. So that's all that an individual will have to pay between 40 and 90 for the for the CDL itself and then a permitting fee of 30 on top of that. Um, but otherwise, an individual is getting paid for their training. If someone's interested in driving bus, what's the best next step they can make? Call Go Right Way. Ask for Marsha. Marsha's the, the bus manager here for Go Right Way in Wapaka, and she's a great lady. She does a super job, and she will get anybody hooked up uh, that's interested in being a bus driver. Perfect. Well, hopefully, hopefully today's uh, message gets a few people interested. I hope so. Yeah. So we, several months ago, we talked about an event that was being done as a fundraiser, the flotilla, and that was to support the installation of a kayak dot at the ch kayak dock at the Chain Exploration Center. And there's maybe a little bit of misconception that that's open to the public. It's more of a school feature for school use. Tell us about that. Yeah, so the flotilla and, and all of the thousands of dollars that the CEC raised is, is just a, a point of celebration. It's a beautiful dock. If anybody would like to see it, go out there and, and, and just check it out. Uh, we have a lot, the school district on, on the lake outside of uh, the CEC campus on Silver Lake, and it, it's it's just gorgeous. But what we're hearing from our neighbors that, that live on the lake is that there have been uh, some, some evenings, people hanging out on the dock till midnight. And uh, as we looked into that, uh, 
talking with our insurance vendor, they recommended for liability sake, you know, because it's a body of water and accidents can happen. Um, we don't want anybody to get hurt. So they recommended putting up a couple of signs, say no public access in conspicuous places there at the entrance to get onto that lot where the dock is. So we presented that to the board last night and the board approved uh, this action. And so we're gonna be putting a couple of signs saying no public access. It's still open for our students and our, our staff at the CEC and it's not gonna have any impact on on our curriculum and, and our PE program and, and, and what we do out there. Very good. And then uh, we want to talk a little bit about uh, high school graduation. You're working on setting that date and there's a couple options for that. There's opinions going both ways. Does it make sense to do it on a weeknight or on a weekend? Um, and I know you want to speak a little bit about what's going on with that and a survey that's coming out. Yeah, the board last night tabled this topic. The topic is setting the date and time for high school graduation. Um, important. It's an important topic. And uh, the last two years, it was a little different than traditionally. Traditionally, while well, they've had it several different evenings over the span of, of numerous years, I've only been here, this is my fifth year only, but uh, they've had it on the Sunday of Memorial Day, the Saturday of Memorial Day weekend, the uh, the Friday of Memorial Day week, they've had it other days. And, you know, the last two years, Josh, we've had it on the Wednesday after Memorial Day. And the reason is because the high school wanted to adjust the culture a little bit, enhance the culture. I call it, it's, a, it's an added value by having our staff uh, dressed in their cap and gowns from their college uh, participating in the graduation ceremony itself. You know, it's been 13 years that the school district has had working with these kids who are now reaching that milestone, that cap of the, the graduation. And all of the teachers from those 13 years of 4K, 5K, all the way through 12th grade had an investment in, and contributed to the success of these students reaching this milestone of graduation, high school graduation. So the idea from the high school was having the staff be available to participate in it. And when it's on a weekend, it, the attendance from staff is very, very low. Part of it is because, well, everybody's busy on weekends, right? Um, including staff and family events and obligations, especially around uh, Memorial Day weekend. Um, the other part is we're able during the weeknights to say to staff, hey, come and do this and, and, and they do it. Uh, we can't make them on weekends come in and, and be at graduation. But having the staff there adds to the uh, level of pomp and circumstance and the specialness of, of the event and, and the graduation. It also comes where we have valid concerns from parents saying, hey, when it's in the middle of the week like that, we feel rushed. Uh, we feel like we are moving from work to getting off work and then running around and then getting to the high school for the ceremony. And the ceremony starts at seven and then by eight, eight fifteen, it's completed. And, you know, then worrying about getting the other children to bed in time because there's school the next day and that type of thing, valid concerns. Um, the, the administration presented, Hey, let's, Let's do it like we did the last two years and have it on Wednesday, May 29th. Uh, some of the board members said, well, what about uh, Sunday, June 2nd? Okay, Sunday, June 2nd is, is another option. You know, it's not on the weekend of Memorial Day. It's on the next weekend. So uh, that's what we're gonna look at. But part of the, you know, the other part of the reason we did it on a Wednesday those last two years, Josh, is uh, because of senior week, uh, the high school administration created uh, a, a week of activities that starts on the Thursday prior. And that's a day where all of the seniors wear their favorite homecoming shirt or, or jersey. Uh, that next day is senior signing day on that Friday before uh, Memorial Day weekend. And that's where we recognize our seniors who are signing with a company or intend to work after school or have an apprenticeship and we give them that recognition. Then you have Monday, there's no school, it's 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 uh, Memorial Day. But the Tuesday then after uh, would be, it's our Senior Scholarship Awards program that 
that day. And, and then the next day, what administration had proposed would, would be Wednesday, May 29th. In the morning, the seniors do their uh, annual senior walk where they walk through the WLC in the middle school. Then they go to the high school for their graduation rehearsal. They have a senior lunch. And then, you know, we propose that it culminates the day that evening at seven o'clock with the ceremony there at the high school with the staff in their cap and gowns assisting and the board and cheering on our graduates and, and celebrating them in this way. So that senior week uh, was part of the, the whole thing. Now, if we did it on, let's say we had graduation and the board votes to do it on, on June 2nd, uh, very likely then we would just adjust that graduation week and uh, probably Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, leading up to June 2nd would be the, we would have those same activities on Tuesday would be the, okay. uh, what we had scheduled for Thursday the previous week with the jerseys and, and that type of thing. But the other, the other point, Josh, on Wednesday the 29th, there's a couple of things that could possibly be going on. For instance, the boys golf sectional, the, the baseball regionals typically are, are, do occur then. We can, working with the WA and those other school districts, alter those 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 times or dates so that they don't interfere with the ceremony uh if the board does vote to to have it on that date there's certainly a lot that goes into figuring out a graduation date that probably the average person doesn't think of <laughs> it is amazing almost every day in the month of may there is something going on especially when you get to the end of may and the other thing people don't realize the seniors still have to get in their instructional minutes and we, we can't just end school like May 15th or be, because they have to get their, their minutes every year in just like uh, the junior seniors and every every student has to get a, instructional minutes in each year. So yeah, every, every date has different things going on. Well, we'll look forward to, to learning soon what that graduation date will be and how that all works out. Did I say that? The board asked that we we survey our seniors. Did I tell you about that or no? I can't uh, remember. No, I, we didn't get to that. Yeah, that there was going to be yeah, a survey. So yeah, so they tabled this. They didn't make a decision. They tabled it and requested that we survey our, our seniors and then the parents of our seniors and see which date they prefer, June 2nd, that, that Sunday for graduation, or uh, May 29th, that Wednesday that administration had originally recommended. So we'll see what the feedback is. We'll compile that and the rationale behind it all we'll share with before they uh they, they put their preference and and then we'll share that with the board next month perfect a um, couple other things going on on the city side of things um fallorama is this saturday that's from nine till three at south park there'll be food vendors on site demos from the senior center and fire department a magician on site petting zoo and then more than 50 uh craft vendors as well and there's no cost to attend um, so that's going on. Details are posted at wapakafallorama.com. And then the city's got a survey out uh, about Churchill Street. Um, the city's looking at developing different strategies to enhance Churchill Street. That's where the old Ruby's Pantry was, the food pantries there, H.H. H. Hinder, that whole area. Um, the old, Some of the old uh, school maintenance buildings are there. So that's kind of an area that's just very mixed with what's going on. And they're just looking for some feedback on that as they develop some plans for the future, and you can either go to the city website or the city Facebook page um, to get the QR code to take that short survey. So those are a couple of things from the uh, city side going on right now. So, Ryan, appreciate the time to chat and get the community up to date, and we will talk again soon. Thanks, Josh.